Hey, Pokedad Fan Club, this is Pokedad. Today, we're looking at Wednesday Words, which we do normally on every Wednesday. Uh, today, we're going to do talk about something a little more practical. Last week was a little more inspirational, and I like to kind of alternate those ideas. So today, we're going to do something a little more practical. We're going to talk a little bit about deck building. Now, for some of you that are maybe more advanced, this may be... Um, you may already know all this and it may not be all that important. I'm really speaking more to new players here uh, about this because at my league I've run into this over and over again where people think that they know how to build a deck and it just doesn't play well for them and then they wonder why. And so we're going to just talk about a general tip that you can do to make your deck building stronger. Now if you are a more advanced player uh, I suggest take this little outline that I have and maybe you can use it to teach beginning players too how to build a better deck. So the deck idea that I want to talk to you about is called the 10-20-30 rule. Okay, We have 60 cards in a deck, 10 of them are going to be one type of energy, 20 another type, and 30 another. Now when I say that I don't mean that you have to get exactly 10 or exactly 20 or exactly 30. But the types should be close, closer to that number than it than the next number. Okay, let me give you. Any, let me first of all explain what the types are, and then we'll show you some examples. Okay, so the first one, the ten, represents energies. All right, you should have around ten energies in your deck. Sometimes you can have a little bit less. Sometimes a little bit more. The decks that tend to have more energy are the ones like the ones that use Togekiss's Serene Grace because you want to maximize uh, the Serene Grace ability to be able to energy accelerate. But even in those decks, the most I've seen is like 14 energies, maybe 15. Uh, that's about it. There are a few other odd decks that might use like 30 or 40 energies. But in general, that's not the norm, okay? Generally, you want to stay around the 10 mark. 10, 12, you can even go 8 in some decks. I'm going to show you a deck in a minute where I use only 7. Uh, actually, I'll show you a couple where I only use 7. But the idea is for energies, you want to stay right around 10 energies per deck. So we, start, we talked about the 20, which the 10, which represents energies. Let's talk about the 20. The 20 should represent your Pokemon that you're going to play. Okay, you're going to play around 20 Pokemon. Again, sometimes it might be a little more, and sometimes it might be a little less. Like in, in the new Vespaquin out of Ancient Origins, you're probably going to want to play a few more than 20, because you need to discard as many as you can so that you can make Vespaquin's attack stronger. Again, though, it's going to be closer to 20 and not closer to 30. And then uh, other decks may only, you may only need 10 or 15. There's some decks that even rely on less than that. But in general, we want to stay around the 20 mark for Pokemon. That leaves us 30 cards. And so it 10 is the energies, 20 is the Pokemon, and 30 is the trainer cards. Now this makes up supporters. This makes up item cards this makes up stadiums and tools okay all of those put together all right now and usually close to half of those should be supporter cards so you should be playing like 12 to 15 supporters in your deck now again that's not a hard and fast rule that's just in general sometimes you can get away with playing less sometimes you need to play more just depending on how your deck plays but again, I'm just giving you general ideas here. Now let's take a look at a couple examples of bad examples. And this is the reason why I think a lot of beginner Pokemon players uh, struggle and they also suffer is because when you buy uh, a theme deck that's play, you, you assume this is how a deck should be built. Let's look at Ocean's Core here. Ocean's Core uh, was one was the in primal clash with Kyogre. Uh, we can take a look at this and just see 
if you see, the first thing uh, they have is they have 30 Pokemon. All right. And the other thing is, is none of the Pokemon really work together. I mean, they don't have a specific way they're working together. These theme decks just throw stuff together. They throw some fire together, and then they throw some water together. Your best card probably is Wall Rain here, and you only got one of it. And it's gonna he's got a lot of energy just to attack. So you need some kind of energy acceleration if you're gonna use him anyway. Um looking at the energies, again, we talked that energy should be closer to 10, not closer to 20. 18 is much closer to 20. And look here, we've got 12 water and 6 fire. So that's an issue. And then look, our trainers are all backwards. We only have 12 trainers in this whole deck. And of supporters, we only have four. Three of them are draw supporters. That's at least pretty good. But uh, so this deck is completely backwards. It doesn't meet the 10, 20, 30 rule in the way we see it. They only have closer to 10 trainers, closer to 20 energy, and closer to 30 Pokemon. And remember, we need to have 10 closer to 10 energies, closer to 20 Pokemon, and closer to 30 trainers. So if you were looking at this deck, we would need to remove a lot of Pokemon and a lot of energy, and we would need to bump up our trainers a lot. All right, let's take another look at another theme deck real quick. This is Resilient Life. This was one of actually one of the best theme decks I've seen just because it had Xerneas in it and Aromatisse. But again, the same issue here. We've got 30 Pokemon, 12 trainers, and 18 energies. And the problem with this is you just can't really make uh, headway with this deck. I mean, first of all, Xerneas' Geomancy is only going to work uh, to get Fairy Energy. So that means all your Psychic types here are going to... I remember my dad getting this deck and playing it, and he was Geomancing to Scolipede, but he could never get his Psychic Energy uh you know, they only had seven psychics in there, and he could never draw into it. And he never had any accelerator. And uh, he did have a couple of professor's letters, but he never drew into it because there's really no great way to draw through your deck quickly with this. So, uh, again, this one's all backwards. We need to lower the Pokemon count, decide which Pokemon are the most important to us, up our trainer count, especially get more uh, supporter cards, and then lower our energy count. Probably either just decide, are we going to go Fairy or are we going to go Psychic? And then go that direction with it. Uh, so anyway, that's that's a look at some bad examples. So let's take a look. And guys, my decks are no uh, by no means the best in the world. But I want to just at least show you some differences here. Uh, the first one I wanted to show you was... Where did it go? Oh, yeah. All right, so here's the Dust Talks Mill Tank deck. This is a budget deck that I uh, I showed you a, a while back. Look at, the, look at the lines now. We play 21 Pokemon. Okay. Matter of fact, I can expand these. All right, we play 21 Pokemon, which is right around the 20 range for Pokemon. We play 28 trainers, which is closer to 30, and then we play 11 energies. This is the way the deck should be built. You need to have most closer to 10 energies, closer to 20 Pokemon, and closer to 30 trainers. And looking, look at our support, supporting cast. We have four Sycamores, so we can draw through our deck quickly. We have three Shaunas to help out, and two Birch. So again, we're drawing through our deck, uh, have a chance to get the Pokemon out and get them to work properly. And then we only have 11 energies. Now some of you may be asking, why do we play so few energies? The reason for that is you only can attach one energy per turn. And when you have problem, when you have Sycamore or you have to Ultra Ball uh, resources away, you may end up just throwing most of your energies away if you play more than 10. By only having 10 in the deck, if you're going through your deck at a proper pace, you're going to run into at least one energy every turn. And you play your one energy and then you move on to the next turn. So 
And also, we don't want our deck clogged up with so much energy, our hand clogged up with so much energy. If I have six energies in my hand and, you know, let's say a super scoop up, I'm not going to be able to do much. All I'm going to be able to do is attach, make my attack, and pass. I want to be able to have flexibility to do other things. So that's why we keep the energies at 11, you know, 10, but at the 10 mark. All right, let's look at another deck. Uh, Real quick, actually I want to look at just a couple more. So let's look at the very first deck I ever profiled was, um, where did it go? Well, let's take a look at this deck. This is actually a brand new deck. I just recently profiled it. It's the Raichu Vespaquin deck. And, uh, nope. Okay, something's not working. Here we go. That's the what I'm looking for. All right, I want to be able to expand this out for you guys. So this one plays a few more uh, Pokemon, and it actually has 25. But notice it's still right between 20 and 30. It's not closer to 30. It's not really closer to 20 either. It's 20 either, but it's right there in that range. We can add a few more Pokemon in this deck because we have a few less energy. We're only playing seven, but again, the seven mark is still closer to the 10. And then trainers were playing 28, which again is closer to 30, uh, 30, the 30 mark. So uh, again, I'm just trying to give you some ideas here about what uh, the deck should look like. Uh, Again, and in this situation, we have main attackers, so we have our idea where we're going with this deck. We have two main attackers. We have a lot of supporting cast, but we know that we're trying to charge up these two people, Raichu and Vespaquin, uh, with the double colorless. And then we can also charge, if, if we need to take two turns to charge them up for whatever reason, we have the fire energy. But for the most part, we're just going to use double colorless. We have a supporting cast, and we have a lot of... Uh, item and trainer cards to get through our deck. In this case, Shaman actually helps us draw through the deck faster, so our supporters might be a little lower in this case. But again, it still follows the 10, 20, 30 rule, generally speaking. Again, I told, like I said before, this is not a hard and fast rule. It's just one of those rules, uh, a general concept to get you started in your deck building journey. All right, let's see if we can find one more. I wanted to show the Florgis deck, and I saw it earlier today. I'm not sure where it went. Um, oh, it's because it's sorry, guys. Give me just a moment here. There it is. All right, sorry for the taking a moment on this one. All right, here's another example of, again, the, the, 20, the 10, 20, 30 rule. This was the very first deck I ever profiled. It's still one of my favorite decks, though we still have Trump Card in there. I play it in Unlimited a lot, and we can I can actually change that out and still use this deck pretty well. I'm going to have to update it for XY on, but... The idea is still the same. Energies, we're playing eight energies in this deck. So it's closer to 10. Pokemon, we're playing 19 Pokemon, so it's closer to 20. And then trainer cards, we're playing 33. So I guess if there's anything that I want you to take away from this video is you need to invest in trainer cards. They're the most important asset in your deck. I know Pokemon are like what you want to collect, but it's actually the trainer cards that make this deck, make these decks run the best. So for that very reason, I, I recommend that you invest in trainer cards, even if you have to invest in just the lower end ones. Get four Sycamores. It's really, it's very imperative that you get Sycamore. Get a couple Lysander. They're very important. Get some other draw support. And then other things that are just necessary is like switch and escape rope, uh, trainer's mail, ultra balls are so useful. 
VS Seekers, Muscle Bands. These are typical cards that really are going to be played in just about every deck. And so if there's anything that you, I can leave you with in this video is invest in your trainer cards. Anyway, guys, this is Pokey Dad. Remember the 10, 20, 30 rule. 10 energies, 20 Pokemon, 30 trainers. Again, that's just in general, but it'll get you started in deck building properly. Anyway, guys, this is Pokey Dad signing off. We'll talk to you later. Bye.